Hey there, Pyre Crew. Welcome to our third video. Today we are going to be covering layering. Now, I want to talk for a second about why layering is important and why it's one of my favorite techniques to use uh, to get really, really fantastic fast results. So essentially layering is a process where we slowly mix in either brighter colors, darker colors, or different colors in slight ways to create a change and then we stack those changes on top of each other in order to create a transition. Those changes that we stack on top of each other are called layers. Um, so there's a couple of things that I wanted to show you. Um, and the first is, is that, and we, we talked about this a little bit in the base coating video, when we push a paint with the brush and lift up, there's a small deposit of paint where we lift that brush up. Now we can control where that dot is lifting up. Why is this important? Generally, we wanna push those lighter colors into that area where we want the highlight to be and then lift up because it's depositing more paint there. The same thing goes for our shadows. If we push the darker color into the area that we want the shadow and then build up, we're building up a more opaque or more solid color where we lift up and then we're creating a little bit more of a transparent area where we're pushing because we're not entirely covering. Uh, think The way that I like to think of it is as if, if you're sweeping with a coarse straw broom and over you know really fine dirt and you sweep, you're not always gonna be able to get all of that dirt on the first pass, but where you sweep you're still and then lift up, you're still gonna accumulate more dirt. Now essentially, that's what pigment is is this just really, really bright dirt. So you can kind of think of it as sweeping or cleaning if that's something that you enjoy doing from time to time. So with that being said, it's gonna be much better if I just show you. So let's go ahead and head over to the table and we will go ahead and just jump right into this technique, which I absolutely love. So we'll see you there. So welcome to this practical application section for layering. Uh, I have a couple of things set up. Of course, you can tell I base coated this entire base with a little bit of that red color. And so what we're going to do, though, now is we are going to start to hop into layering. Now, you can also see here I've kind of made a little light patch of red on my hand. Um, and I'm going to get into that here in a second, too. But the first thing that I really would like to talk to you guys about is this concept that is called the push pull concept. And essentially what that means, and this this is with any technique, is that when we have paint on the brush, right, and we push it and then we lift up, it leaves a bead of paint and you can see that right there. Now, when we when do we wanna use this? You know, with this case, we are going to be pushing the paint into our shadows. So we want the most opacity you know, the least amount of transparency down here in the shadows because we want to build those up. Now, you do not always have to use that push-pull concept, uh, especially with layering. The main thing that we're wanting to do is create this series of lines so that we can essentially create a change from point A to point B. Now, the reason why I have this little patch of paint over here, and this is something that you'll see me doing a lot when I paint, is I have paint on my hand. Now, this isn't just to look cool and be a, be a cool miniature painter, or, you know, whatever the cool kids do. Um, it's really here so that when I mix a new batch of paint, so we're gonna start mixing black into red, and we're not gonna do anything else other than that very slowly, uh, is I can check to see if it's going to create enough of a change, not too little and not too much. And now, how do you know if it's too little or too much? Experience and doing this over and over and over again. So uh, with all of that being said, we're gonna go ahead and jump into this and we're gonna start to create our transitions. Now, if you wanna try this technique out and you've never done it before, I would also highly, highly recommend that you do this on something that's very large and very flat. Now, the reason I recommend you do this is that it's going to be much, much easier to see what your brush is doing than if you're trying to paint a teeny tiny little miniature. So we're gonna go ahead and I mix some paint here on the brush while I've been chatting with you guys. And we're going to kind of just push a little bit of it to see if there's enough of a change. And so you always kind of wanna let it dry as well because paint is always gonna be, it's always gonna look a little bit different from when it's wet to when it's dry. Okay, so I think that that's a little bit too much of a change 
And so I'm going to mix in a little bit more red with it. And now I'm very confident that that's going to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and load the brush up and we are going to go ahead and push this down. Now this doesn't need to be one even straight line. It doesn't need to kind of look like this, right? It can kind of be a little bit jagged. Um, but the main thing is that we're pushing it down into our shadow. And so now that we have that, we have a line right here, kind of a rough line. Now when I make my next transition, and I'm gonna be just be using the exact same color because you can see how you can see through it a little bit down here as I rotate it. We're gonna leave, we wanna leave that line and come down just a little bit and then continue to do this pushing process. And so essentially we're going to continue to do that until we get all the way down to pure black. And the main thing that you need to remember is that each of these lines that you create, you need to respect that line and not paint over it with your successive layers. Now, sometimes on a miniature, it's gonna get really, really tiny. And sometimes the difference between one color and the next is gonna get kind of hard to see. So just keep that in mind, cut yourself a little bit of slack you know, and don't take it too seriously and just make sure that you're having fun. Okay. So again, here's that last line. So we're going to go just a little bit below it. Now I'm gonna change it up a little bit for you guys, okay? So I'm gonna to continue to slowly mix down, but this time I'm not going to use that push and pull method. This time I'm just gonna do uh, something that I like to call marking the layer. So um, essentially we're, we're using the same consistency of paint. You guys can kind of tell that here on my hand. A layer needs to be somewhat transparent, but not entirely transparent. Uh, and here, I'll show you that really quickly here on a piece of paper. So you see how we can still see those lines through it pretty well. And you know, we might even need to thin this down just a touch. Better, much better. So essentially we are wanting to see through the paint just a little bit. Um, and that's also why that push pull technique is important because sometimes we don't want to be able to see through the paint. But with this technique, we're not doing the push pull anymore. We're just marking it out. We're just keeping this line in mind and we're just kind of marking in, in, in disregard essentially to the push pull. You can kind of see that I go back and forth just to make sure that I'm getting somewhat even consistency with that paint. Now, there isn't one right way to do this. Um, some people like to do kind of a, a little bit of a stitching back and forth where they're marking. Some people really love to use that push pull. Some people just kind of will sweep around very, you know, slowly in kind of a zigzag motion. There isn't one right way. Just make sure the key thing is that you're leaving those previous lines so that we can build that transition. So now we're at pure black, so we're just testing the consistency here. It's nice and thin. And then this will be our final, final one. And so, as you guys can see, as I rinse my brush off, we have created a very, very effective transition. And now if I rotate it in the light, you can kind of see the difference between some of the some of the layers, but we've done such a good job at slowly mixing that black into our red that we have created just a really, really fantastic transition from point A to point B. Now, how would this change if we were wanting to do something like highlights? You would push the paint or you would mark the paint in the opposite direction. So with this color, if we wanted to get pink, we would add white. If we wanted to highlight it with orange, we'd start to mix in some yellow. So, but um, really what we're looking for here is the core concepts 
of this specific technique. So uh, I really hope that you guys have enjoyed this uh, this video on layering. If you guys want to support me, you can do that over at Patreon. Even a dollar really, really helps me. Uh, and you know, if you want to subscribe for five dollars, you gain access to a a video archive, you might say a pirate's treasure trove uh, of over 30 hours of educational content on how to help you improve your miniature painting for your next miniature project. So thank you guys so much again for watching these Pirate Monkey Basics videos. I hope that this helps you improve your layering and your blending. I would love to see uh, some photos from you guys of you guys attempting this technique. And if you guys, ha as always, have any questions, I would love to hear those questions because I want to make sure that we make you as successful as possible at miniature painting. So uh, thank you so much again for your support. Uh, you guys have a fantastic day and happy painting. Bye.